Welcome to the Matt Bernier Show, DRF TV, live.drf.com, livestream.com, the Daily Racing Forms Twitter handle, at DRF Inside Post, as well as the Daily Racing Forms Facebook page. My name is Matt Bernier. You can follow me on Twitter, at Bernier underscore Matt. This is the preview edition of the Matt Bernier Show. Taking a look at some racing from this upcoming weekend. That would be the weekend of Saturday, May the 26th. We'll take a look at two grade ones out at Santa Anita, as well as a nice graded stakes race up north of the border at Woodbine. If you listen podcast version, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, video.drf.com. If you listen on YouTube, click that subscribe button. You'll get all the latest offerings from DRF TV. Also, give us the thumbs up. Uh, helps kind of get everything out there and the engagement scores and X, Y, and Z. So we want to pump those things out there for you and we can get everything out there in good order. So uh, before we dive into the three races that we'll talk about for this weekend, let's quickly look ahead a little bit even farther. Now that we know that it's already in the back burner. We've got the first two legs of the North American Triple Crown, or the United States Triple Crown, I should say, uh, in the bag for Justify. He's won the Kentucky Derby. He's won the Preakness. Now all eyes are on Belmont Park two weeks from now for the Belmont Stakes at a mile and a half. We'll find out if Justify is just simply that much better than everyone else. I think talent-wise, there's a little doubt that he's the best horse. But as I mentioned a little bit in the recap, talking about the Preakness and and good magic and, and circumstances being things that get horses beat, not necessarily because they get beat by better animals. Uh, I, I think this is an instance where that could be the possibility for Justify. Is it all of those races in a short amount of time culminating and it finally catches up to him in a race that he'll never, ever run that distance again at a mile and a half? Uh, is it a matter of some fresh faces, some new shooters that have been sitting out and waiting in the weeds you know what? Let the Preakness go. We'll be ready to go. We'll catch you at Belmont at a mile and a half, a distance that perhaps some of these horses are better suited for than he would be. Uh, we'll find out. Let's take a look really briefly, and we can talk about each one of these horses a little bit by themselves. This is a, a list as of Wednesday of, of potential horses that could run in the Belmont Stakes. I say potential because there are a number of them that it, it, it is still way up in the air about it, whether or not they're going to run. Uh, first and foremost, Audible. Audible is a horse that uh, the big sort of elephant in the room is the common ownership. And I brought this up when we talked about the Preakness with Quip. You can't tell me that this is not something that is uh, potentially a major, major problem. Because when you have a very talented horse like Audible, many people would think he is the, the most likely upsetter of Justify in a race like the Belmont. But because they share common ownership and common interest... They don't necessarily want to beat the other one. I, I understand uh, Andy Sterling tweeted something earlier in the week, and I, it's 100% right. Without betters and without owners, this, there is no game. I, I just, in an instance like this, though, if the owners all of a sudden are taking up everything and all the good horses are all owned by common interests and they don't want to run them against one another, then all of a sudden that's hurting what we, the players, can can actually bet on. And I think then all of a sudden there is an effect. But I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if you can find an answer. It's always good when you get fresh blood and you get fresh money into the, the game as a whole. But, it, man, it's just it's frustrating to see the possibility. And, again, nothing is confirmed yet one way or the other. You're hearing rumors and whispers that it's probably more likely than not that he won't run, but nothing is confirmed. Um, it's disappointing. You want to see the best go against the best, and especially for an accomplishment like this. Now, I've gone on record saying I think the Triple Crown is a little bit, not a little bit, is a lot overblown. Is it very difficult? Yes, no question about it. But does it necessarily mean that you're one of the all-time greats? Mm, I, it's, I guess that's another story for another day. But because you accomplish something that's very, very difficult to do, doesn't immediately make you great. Not saying that's the case with Justify. I think Justify's talent is, is quite obvious. But the idea that if you're going to accomplish something this this impressive, do it against the best of the best. And I don't want to find out that because well, you might have common owners that you're not going to you're not going to face the best of the best. That to me is a little bit disappointing and a little discouraging. And I hope this is not a trend. The the, the major partnerships is a trend that's that's front, front and center. But I just hope going forward, it doesn't become the norm where this is all it is, where half of the field is made up by horses that have shared common ownership. I mean, that, that's not going to be good for anyone. Uh, Bandua, Bandua, I, I don't know how you pronounce that. Dermot Weld apparently has a horse, uh, and, and maybe this one comes over. I don't know. Weld has won the Belmont in the past, 
But I, it just a year like this seems a little bit unlikely. I thought Blended Citizen ran really well in the Peter Pan. I think he makes a lot of sense at a mile and a half. He clearly likes the racetrack. If he can stay close to the pace, I think he's interesting at a big, big number. Uh, Bravazzo talked about him a little bit in the recap show. I'm intrigued by him as well. I think he can get close and stay relatively close. I think these turns at Belmont are better suited for him than they the turns at Churchill Downs or really any, any air quotes, normal configuration, Pimlico, any of those. Belmont, you've got those big wide turns, and I think that could benefit a horse like Bravazzo, who just seems to kind of spin his wheels a little bit, rounding them. Free drop Billy, nice horse, probably wants to run all day. Don't think he's good enough, but, uh, you know, we'll wait and see before we actually go to a conclusion or, or come to a conclusion about my thoughts on him. Gronkowski is uh, a little bit of an interesting unknown. You know, we talked about it and joked that he would have been the, the takeout equalizer in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, perhaps he will be in the Belmont, but uh, Chad has him now, and, and he's in good hands. Uh, the connections are very, very sharp. We'll find out if he actually fits against our best of the best as far as Americans are concerned. Now, Hofberg is the horse that most people are going to look at, along with Audible, as the alternatives, and even Vino Rosso, who we'll talk about momentarily, to defeat Justify. Uh, I, I like him a lot. I, I've made no bones about it. I think talent-wise, he is as good, if not better, than many of them, and I think, again, long-term, I'll take him over all of them. Mm. Maybe not justified, but pretty darn close. I think Hofberg, I think the sky is the limit for a horse like that. Uh, justify, we don't need to talk about him too much more. Uh, restoring hope is another reason that this entire piece could be a little bit of a, a concern. I said weeks ago, before the Kentucky Derby, and actually in the DRF Players podcast in the Triple Crown draft that we did, I said at the time, I picked Restoring Hope with my last pick, saying... If I can make a future bet on the Derby, I want, or on the Belmont Stakes, rather, I want Restoring Hope. And I felt that way coming out of the Wood Memorial. He's the kind of horse that's forwardly placed. He'll clip off 24 and 4, 24 and 3, and just kind of grind you into the ground. He won't do anything brilliant. The problem is he's trained by Bob Baffert. And Baffert, ultimately, it sounds like the owners of Restoring Hope would like to run or take a shot in the Belmont. But Baffert clearly is in a little bit of a pickle there as well because do you really want to run the risk? Maybe he's not nearly good enough, but do you want to run the risk or the possibility of having another horse that you that you train defeat your your prized possession, your prized pupil? Again, there's a little bit of a conflict of interest there, and and it just I guess it is what it is. I don't know what the the real answer there would be, but. Um, I think he's an interesting horse for Storing Hope if they do run there tenfold. We saw how well he finished down there at Pimlico in the Preakness. I still don't know about the additional distance. There was a major, major difference between a mile and three sixteenths and a mile and a half. But again, there's a major distance question for many, if not all, of these horses. And then Vino Rosso. Vino Rosso has always felt like a horse that just... He'll run as long as he possibly can. The, the distance is going to be an issue for him. The question becomes talent. The Derby, he had a little bit of, uh, apparently, he had a lot of dirt kick back in his face. And and I just, I think he's talented. I, I think Belmont is probably the most likely and the most reasonable spot for a horse like Vino Rose. So the question is, again, are any of these horses capable of getting the best of Justify for one reason or another, does all of the racing catch up to justify? Does someone go out there and really push him hard early and soften him up just enough so that when they hit the top of the lane and you still have basically a quarter mile to run or, or even more than that, um, three-eighths of a mile to run, is, is there is there enough in the tank left to hold off these horses coming from slightly off of it, whether it is a Hofberg or an Audible or a Vino Rosso or anyone else? So we'll find out. That looks like right now a list of possible candidates for the Belmont Stakes in two weeks. We'll find out how many of them actually end up running and getting into the starting gate for that race because, again, Triple Crown's on the line. We'll find out if Justify is just that far superior to all of his contemporaries. Let's dive into some racing for this weekend. We'll go over two grade ones out at Santa Anita, as well as a nice graded, ups, uh, graded stakes excuse me, up north of the border at Woodbine. Let's begin with the Gold Cup out at Santa Anita. The grade one Gold Cup at Santa Anita, a mile and a quarter on the main track. Let's take a look at the field and again, if you are new to the program, whether you're listening or you're watching on the far right side of the screen or my odds, it's a value line, not what a morning line suggests. It's what I would consider a fair win wager or fair win price on any one of these horses. In post position order, number one's Little Scott. He made him 49 to 1 for Vladimir Sarin. Cross centered in a race on Thursday. Uh, even if he goes here, don't like his chances, but he will be forwardly placed. The two is Accelerate, one of the big horses in here. John Sadler has this horse in raging form. If you believe the Santa Anita handicap, if you believe the Oaklawn handicap, he's taken his game to the next level. And heck, we even saw him run big races last summer out at Del Mar. 
he is a major contender in here, no question about it. I think the the distance hurdle, he's at least... I don't think he's totally gotten that out of the way. I understand he wanted a mile and a quarter, two starts back. But there's just a piece of me that still wonders, is he better at nine furlongs as opposed to ten? We'll find out. He's going to take money, and he deserves to. I made him three to one. The three is Prince of Arabia, another horse that, from a speed figure standpoint, isn't isn't totally overmatched, but is very uh, up against it, let's say, uh, 49 to one. The number four is City of Light. I would imagine he's going to be the post-time favorite when it's all said and done for Mike McCarthy. This is a very talented horse. Uh, he's really done nothing wrong. He's never been out of the exact in seven lifetime starts. He has shown now that he can stretch out to two turns and he can ship out of town. He won the Oaklawn Handicap most recently, very impressively. He was wide. He loomed. I thought he just finished tremendous. That was a great effort from him. Um, I made him 5-2. to two. Like I said, I would imagine he'll be the post-time favorite, but I think you'll have three horses that are very, very tightly packed as far as the off odds are concerned. The number five is Dr. Door, another one of those horses that I think is going to be right up there as far as the shortest prices are concerned. Goes out for Baffert, most recently in the Californian, won that thing in a laugher with a 108 buyer, highest last out buyer in the field. He's going to be forwardly placed, and he's going to need to prove that he can handle, one, this level of company, and two, can he handle a different, more demanding pace situation going two turns? It's one thing to do it going one turn or be able to do it you know, going two against inferior company. It's another thing to have some, some legitimate pace pressure early on at 10 furlongs against good horses. We'll find out if he can do all that. I made him 3-1. to one. The number six is Pavel, a horse that I've always been a fan of. I don't think he ran poorly in the World Cup over in Dubai, but it just kind of feels like this horse is... I, I didn't think they should have run him in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I'm not suggesting that's why he hasn't gotten back to his best runs. But I just, it, it seemed like it was a lot in a short amount of time. And unfortunately, his form, I understand the San Pasquale. He had a major, major excuse with that trip, which was just miserable. And then the Malibu, seven-eighths of a mile is probably not what he wants to do. Then he goes to Dubai. Perhaps now we're going to get back to those low to mid-100 buyers here on Saturday afternoon. If he does, he has a he has a legitimate chance in here. I made him five to one. And number seven is full of luck for Hollendorfer. Flavian Pratt has them out in here. This is a horse had a lot of hype surrounding him coming here to North America. He started in the San Francisco Mile, was god awful, showed up in the Californian, nowhere near good enough to run with a horse like Doctor Door. I think he's way up against it. And truth be told, I think they should probably run him in the turf race because that's what he did best down there in South America. But Right now, I, I think if they choose to run him here, he's way up against it. Made him 24 to 1. Let's take a look at the pick and the play for me here in the Gold Cup out at Santa Anita. Uh, the pick is going to be the number five, Dr. Door. I think Dr. Door is very, very interesting. We're going to take a look right back right now at that stretch run of his in the Californian. Dr. Door visually tremendous. And I understand, again, he beat an inferior, uh, inferior group of horses, but at the same time, it's not as though this was just him kind of loping along out there. He went out there, set some legitimate numbers, forwardly placed anyway, rolled up on the far turn, and blew the doors off this field. Now again, Prince of Arabia is going to be a million to one in here. He's going to need to be able to prove that he can do that against the likes of City of Light and the likes of Accelerate and the likes of Pavel. Maybe he can, maybe he can't. Baffert has a tremendous record with these kind of horses over the past couple of years. Past two years, dirt, winner last out, route races, graded stakes at Santa Anita. 13 for 26, it's a 50% strike rate. 22 of the 26 in the money with a 186 ROI. The ROI is impressive when you consider that 10 of those horses were odds on. Uh, I think Dr. Dorr is all of a sudden, maybe this is what he's wanted all along, a stretch out in distance by looking at Lucky out of an unusual heat mare. Uh, I'm going to go with Dr. Dorr in here. As far as the play is concerned, I think he's going to be a shorter number, but I don't think he's going to be the favorite with those other two horses in here. So I'll play him $25 to win at odds of 3-1 to one or greater, knowing that City of Light is the horse to beat. Accelerate deserves a ton of respect. And Pavel. I think Pavel's an interesting runner as well, but I'll go with Dr. Dorr. 25 to win and odds of 3 to 1 to get the job done in the Gold Cup out at Santa Anita. Another grade one out at the great race place on Saturday is the grade one gamely scheduled as race number eight scheduled post time is four o'clock Pacific. Let's take a look at the field of Phillies and mares going a mile and an eighth on the turf course. There was some big breaking news 
on Thursday afternoon. A horse that would have been vying for favoritism, Uni, for Chad Brown, is not going to be running. She did not ship to the West Coast. She got ill. Chad had to stop on her. That changes the complexion of the race from a wagering standpoint dramatically. In post position order, the number one, Madam Dance a lot. I'm a big fan of this girl. I think she can run. I think she's very talented. She got a major late kick, made her five to two. Midnight Crossing is the two in here for Richard Baltus as well. Uh, I have to be honest, she's the kind of horse that needs to be forwardly placed. And I just, I don't think she's as good as these other girls in here. If you think there's going to be a soft pace, which on paper it doesn't look like there's a ton of speed, maybe she can get a little bit brave out there. But I don't think she's as talented as the other horse that figures to be forward and hawks more. And I just don't think, just from straight away, I just don't think she's as good as some of the other horses. Made her 24 to 1. Number three is Mopatism. I'm a big fan of Mopatisms. This is the first time she'll try turf. There's not a ton of turf on the bottom side. Uncle Mo, they can do anything. But. I really think this is just more a matter of the connections looking, taking a, taking inventory of what's out there. Any of the big races on dirt for the girls on the West Coast, you've got to deal with Unique Bella, you've got to deal with Fault, you've got to deal with Paradise Woods. Realistically, if they all show up in these races, Mopatism is running for third at best. I think this is nothing more than the connections trying to find out if she can run on turf. And if she can, now all of a sudden you have more options. If she can't, then I think you're probably best suited getting her out of town, getting her away from those other girls, trying to find spots. Because realistically, she's just not as talented as the best ones. I love her. I think she's honest and shows up. But if we're calling a spade a spade, she is very clearly a notch or two below the best of the best. We'll find out if she can step on turf. Made her 19 to 1. Sophie P is the number four. Stateside debut, eh, not great, not terrible. She's going to need to move forward in a big way if she's going to be competitive here. She gets Kent to Sormo, 32 to 1. The number five, Uni, is out. She is not running in the gamely. The number six is Bo Recall, a horse that I've been a giant fan of since she got here. I think she has a major turn of foot. Maybe the Royal Heroine was the, the aha moment, and now she's put it together. Or maybe she's still Bo Recall and she's just light on figs. She's going to need to improve. I still am really taken by the way that she finishes races. I made her 3-1. to one. Number 7 is Hawksmore. Hawksmore for Arno Delacour could be the key to the entire race because she likes to be forwardly placed. There's not a ton of speed in here. The other speed that is in here is not nearly to the quality that she is. But the Dahlia, if you think it was nothing more than a means to an end to get to this spot, sure, you can excuse it. That was a bad, bad effort from her. She was bet down to one to five, and she had no real excuse. She was out there. She sat just off of a target. She's probably better when she's more forward and actually on the lead, and perhaps she gets that on Saturday. But the way that she just could not get over the hump, and you see the horse that she was only a length and a quarter ahead for third came back to earn an 82 buyer. The sixth-place finisher was the next out with an 83. She's going to need to really run one of her best races in order to get the job done here. I'm not saying that's impossible, but it just... Something to keep in the back of your mind. Hawksmore made her 7-2. to two. And the 8 is Madam Stripes. Madam Stripes is a horse that, uh, she's a conundrum. I, I don't know what to do with her. 10 times second or third. But then you know when she comes with her best effort, like she did in the megahertz going back to January, she can certainly win a field like this. I, uh, She's just been an absolute mind you know what for me basically since she got here won't be surprised she runs well won't be surprised if she runs terribly made her six to one let's talk about a pick and a play in this spot in the grade one gamely i I've, i'm a fanboy. i love Bo Be- recall i think she's incredibly talented from a a finish standpoint and at the end of the day turf racing is about how you finish can you come with a big big late run did she ever come with a big big late run this was her winning in her most recent start the royal heroine Nola Gray, Mongolian shopper, Madame Stripes coming back for more on the inside. And they're followed deeper by sassy little Lila. Mirage trying to weave a passage on Thundering Sky. Bo Recall is hurtling down the outside. Madame Stripes headed by Bo Recall, who comes from the back and wins powerfully by a length to Thundering Sky, who got up. The thing to me that was most impressive about that effort, when you go into Formulator, you can break it into incremental fractions as opposed to seeing what the elapsed time is. Uh, her third quarter mile was in 22.75, and her fourth quarter was in 22.84. She actually ran faster rounding the turn than she did actually down the lane. Uh, to me, it was a brilliant effort. If you can replicate that kick, she's going to have a big chance here in this spot. From a buyer, she's light. From a time form, she's light. I'm just going based on what the eye is telling me. And, and you know what? I thought maybe I was wrong early on as a three-year-old that I thought she, that just the sky was the limit, and I wanted them to bring her to Belmont to run in the Oaks. And for one reason or another, she didn't run well there. And then she almost won a grade one at Del Mar going a mile and an eighth. 
And then she was just, eh, okay, in the QE2 Cup. Don't want to hold that against her. She was bad in the American Oaks. Just really no other way of putting that. And then when they turned her all the way back, I thought that was just sort of major red flag. Maybe she can't do it. Maybe she's not as good as I thought she was. Then she comes back in the Royal Heroine and bang, just like a shot out of a cannon. Now, there's an interesting sort of dynamic there where I always thought she would be better at a mile and eight to a mile and a quarter. But clearly, six and a half isn't going to work. Maybe she's a flat miler because that that's really only one of the handful of times she's been allowed to go a flat mile with the exception of the debut in the States and the two subsequent starts, both of which she ran into Sir Cat Sally, who we know what she was capable of when she was right. Maybe Bo Recall is a miler. And if she is, that's going to be a problem on Saturday because this is at nine furlongs. But I'm going to go with sort of the mentality that that was the bulb going on, her putting it all together, and we're going to get a big effort here on Saturday. Uh, she's 3-1. to one. How am I going to play the race? I'm going to play $10 exactas with Bo Recall in first, and then the 1 and the 7 in second. The 1 is Madam Dance a lot. The 7 is Hawksmoor. Hawksmoor, that tactical advantage, I think is going to be significant and at least make her a player for exotics. Then I'll back it up with a saver exact of $5 with the 1 and the 7 in first and Bo Recall running second. But for me in the game, Lee, I'm hopeful. She's one of my favorites. Hopeful Bo Recall can get the job done in the grade 1 game, Lee. Third and final race we'll go over on this week's edition of the preview edition of the Matt Burning Your Show. Let's go to Woodbine, north of the border. We haven't been up there yet this year, I don't believe, on this program anyway. Race number eight is the grade two Eclipse Stakes. A mile and a 16th on the main track. Happens to be a tapita surface. It really, it's a who's who of the routers up north of the border at Woodbine. The best horse in training up there is Pink Lloyd, but he is not a distance kind of horse. These are the best of the best as far as the distance horses are concerned. Let's take a look at them in post-position order. Melmich is the number one, seven to two on my value line. He's probably going to go off shorter than that. I think there is a question about is he still the same Melmich that he was last year or even the year prior because he came back, and I un I understand it was off of a little bit of a layoff, but I expect to see a little bit more finish out of him there. Got a little bit of a pinch at the beginning of this thing. We'll find out. His best race certainly makes him a player, and again, this is a very wide open race. I think he can go a number of ways. Made him 7-2. to two. The two, Gigantic Breeze. Another horse I think has a giant chance in here. Really, this horse... His form recently, with the exception of the dirt race, just draw a line through that, his synthetic races are fantastic. 6 of 13 lifetime on the synthetic. Go back to his four most recent synthetic races. It's a second in the Dominion, Dominion Day behind Melmich. It's a third by a half length behind Melmich. And are you kidding me? A couple horses he'll run into here as well. It's a win in the Presque Isle Mile by four lengths. And it's a win in the Autumn over Melmich. This horse really is in great, great form. We'll find out if he's ready to fire fresh. It is good and worth noting that he has fired fresh in the past for this barn. Made gigantic breeze 4-1. to one. Tis a runner from Mike Maker, a horse that I'm always a big fan of. He is just totally clueless out there. You watch him, he's going to change leads 15 times on you. Uh, he's going to come from the back of the pack, made him 10-1. to one. The number five, or excuse me, number four is Are You Kidding Me? Another horse that just, again, he's an old hard hitter. He's an eight-year-old, shows up and runs. He's got basically, it's hard to knock anything this horse has done out on the racetrack. He's not a dirt horse. Okay, we figured that out. But he's 8 of 20 lifetime on the synthetic. He's 15 of 20 in the money. It looks like he hasn't missed much as far as uh, ability-wise. He came back, and he's got the highest last out buyer in the field with a 95 in that allowance race, which was specifically written for this race here. I think Are You Kidding Me is obviously a major contender in here. Made him 7-2. to two. Hollywood Critic is the number 5 for Barb Minchel. Uh, unfortunately, I think this horse is way up against it. Just not nearly fast enough to run with the best of the best in here. Made, her 40, or made him 49-1. Uh, the number 6 is Tiz Slam for another Roger Atfield runner. Atfield's barn, very strong to start off this meeting. This is a horse, uh, to me, he is the definition of a dirtied-up horse. I think his synthetic races are far and away better than his turf races. Uh, he's only tried dirt one time, don't. Don't hold that against him. But this horse is a different animal when he's on synthetic as opposed to turf. Uh, and that's why it's not always apples to apples trying to compare, well, will you be able to transfer your form from synth to turf or turf to synth? Sometimes there is just that much of a difference. I think he is a monster on synthetic, made him 5-1. to one. And Sir Dudley Diggs, who won the Queen's Plate a few years back, uh, he's coming in off the heels of a victory in the Barbados Gold Cup for Mike Maker and Ken and Sarah Ramsey. I made him 12-1. to one. Let's talk about the pick and the play for me in the Eclipse on Saturday at Woodbine. I'm going to go with the number six, Tizislam. 
I really genuinely believe he is a different animal when he gets over the tapita or over any sort of synthetic at this point. We're going to take a look at his run in the Ontario Derby last year. Uh, he turned the tables on Holy Helena. She got the better of him in a race like the Queen's Plate. It killed me because I thought he ran a giant race there that day, and she was just better than him. This time around, though, in the Ontario Derby, he ran a bang-up race. He got the jump on her, and I thought he finished very, very well. Now, the reason that I think he might offer a little bit of value in this race, now maybe he's not as good as the older horses are, but I look at it and say the Commonwealth Turf, turf, he didn't run well. You look at the Tropical Park Derby, turf, didn't run well. You look at the Fairgrounds Handicap, turf, didn't run that well. And then you come back in the Pan Am at a mile and a half, turf. Didn't run well. I think you get him back to synthetic, and you can go back all the way through his PPs. And there's a beautiful thing about Formulator. You can black certain things out and highlight things. You got the Ontario Derby that's a victory. Prior to that, the Centaur, not a good effort from him at Indiana Grand. Prior to that, the Prince of Wales on dirt at Fort Erie, not a good effort. Then you're left with the runner-up finish in the Queen's Plate, big effort. The plate trial was much better than it looks, beaten by a length and three quarters, but he was forced to wait in behind horses. If he's clear, he goes on and wins. And then you get the Wando prior to that, a good second behind King in his court, who at the time was a nice horse. Tis a slam, I think this is what he wants to do. He wants to route, he wants to run on synthetic, and he's going to get all that on Saturday afternoon. I will play $25 to win on the number six Tis a slam at odds of five to one or greater. I'm hopeful he can get the best of the rest of the big boys up there in the routing division of the older horses anyway at Woodbine in the Eclipse on Saturday. That'll do it for the preview edition of the Matt Bernier Show. If you've been listening live, live live.drf.com, livestream.com, Daily Racing Forms, Twitter handle, at DRF Inside Post, as well as the Daily Racing Forms Facebook page. Thank you for doing so. If you listen to podcasts, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, video.drf.com, thank you for doing so. If you're on iTunes, give us the the big review or whatever it is, the five stars. If you listen on YouTube, uh, questions, comments, concerns, fire away in the comment section below. Give us the thumbs up. Subscribe to DRF TV. You'll get everything that we've got for you. Uh, and including things like what bookend this show. Uh, we roll into this with the DRF Players Podcast with Peter Thomas Fornital and Jonathan Kinchin. If you subscribe to YouTube or if you subscribe to the Daily Racing Form on iTunes, you're going to get it all right there uploaded in your podcast feed. Following this show, as we always do on Friday, we lead into the latest edition of Out of the Gate with all the usual suspects. If you subscribe on YouTube, bang, it's all right there for you. If you listen on iTunes, bang, it's all right there. So, again, thumbs up, subscribe, Five-star rating, the whole nine. Help us out here. Help us help you. Uh, Best of luck this weekend, however you're going to go about playing things. Uh, We will be back on Tuesday. Actually, no, it won't be Tuesday. It'll probably be Wednesday because of the holiday uh, with a recap of this past weekend's action. And we will slowly but surely be continuing to look forward to Belmont Park. In just a few weeks, we'll find out if Justify can win the Triple Crown for the second time in three years for Bob Baffert. Without further ado, we're going to get you ready for the latest edition of Out of the Gate. Best of luck this weekend, however you're playing, whatever you're playing, wherever you're playing. This has been the Matt Bernier Show.